Hi, I'm Matthew Lux from Isotope 217. Welcome to launch. And I've been there for 20 years, but um, um, and we've been working on these different musical projects for probably six, seven years. So um, since that time, um, you know, I don't know how something like that, you, you just meet friends and you start playing together. Then all of a sudden it was like people from Tortoise, people from Isotope, people from Chicago Underground, just kind of all kind of came together with other people like Sam Precop and Jim O'Rourke and, uh, um, and just started doing creative things together. And that's really what's created the, the scene there. It's something like that. That was bad. That was a completely uninteresting story. I suppose you can say that. I mean, you know, we do freely improvise at times and whatnot. We do sometimes play over longer extended grooves or, or whatever, but um, I think it's a very limiting thing to say, you know, and I think, I mean, Isotope had, at least attempts to use so many different levels of, of sound that um, I don't think it can be called any anything jazz or you know jam band style whatever it's all of that and and none of that you know this writer in in, in Kyoto in, in uh, Japan had the best word for it he called it onkyo it's o n k y o um, which simply just means abstract sonics you know that's I think that's the most accurate term anyone has ever used describing. Um, that type of music. I mean, it would be a it would be a playground, I think, for someone to 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 do some remixes of that stuff. But um, we we really haven't asked anybody. That's a good idea. That just means like taking some stuff that you've recorded and tweaking it in, in various ways in order to to. Um, so the sound hits you right in the middle of the head exactly where you want it. That could mean something as simple as, as using reverb or, or using a phaser or using complex, complex uh, sequential um, synthesizers. Um, I mean, we used all the above on the last isotope record. Probably in the 30 people that make up the, the crew, there's only three of us who are from Chicago. And uh, I don't know why they started to move to Chicago, like, in the end of the 80s, because uh, why, why, I mean, you can get good food in Chicago, but it's cold. Um, but it's also cheap, and there are a lot of places to play. And uh, there's, not, there's not a big industry presence, and that lent itself to people who just wanted to uh, do whatever they wanted to do. Well, do you know do you know the movie Rockers? It's it's the, well, it's this reggae movie, um, like all the dudes like uh, I can't think of that drummer like Horse Face or Horse Mouth or something, and uh, Sly and Robbie are in the movie, and it's like from the '70s. And there's a scene in the movie where uh, the the star of the movie is like riding his bike and he goes to a party to to DJ. Somebody steals his motorbike. And then he comes out, and he's like, and it's in Jamaican patois, which I won't try to do. But he was just like, who stole the I motorbike? Who's the culprit? And then we were on tour with this DJ CX, who's DJ for, uh, what are they called? The Annie Pop Consortium. He's, a, he's an old friend of ours. And he thought somebody had stole his Walkman when we got to this college gig. And he was running around like with this fake Jamaican patois, accusing all these like 18 year olds of stealing his Walkman. We were just rolling on the ground. And then that just became a thing. And we wound up calling the album that. Improvisation and jamming to me is totally two different things. It's not like synonym, you know, and uh, I, I can't really quantify what the difference is, but I think if if I think somebody's improvising, 
they're part of a tradition and they have they've developed a skill or whatever and not to say that jamming can't be good or that people who do that aren't skilled but it's just something else it it sounds like it's just a sound to me i'll be like that guy's jamming that guy's improvising you know i had a guy come up to me we played at the club that the guys from fish own in winooski vermont and after the show, I had this guy come up to me, and I didn't say anything to him. He just came up to me. He was like, man, you know, you guys were jamming. He's like, but the best jam guitar player is Trey Anastasio. And I was just like, I was like, don't, don't talk to me, man. I'm like, you can't, you can't talk about that dude and Jeff Parker in the same sentence even. Not because, and that dude is fine. I'm not saying he's bad, but it's just like, that's different apples and oranges. Well, we've never been approached to do a remix, but we would we would do that in a second. Um, we we have a remix record out, but it's a strange thing. We took a a bunch of live tapes from us playing, like when we first started, when we used to just improvise. We didn't play tunes, and uh, we gave them to Designer, who's a Chicago guy, and Mike Candle from Tranquility Bass, and. Uh, they just m did whatever they wanted. Casey's thing kind of just took a piece of music and kind of flipped it and bounced it. Candle took like 20 pieces of music and chopped it up and processed it and stuff. And we'd like to get into that more, but I think uh, I think our label is kind of tired of the remix thing. I think Tortoise banged all the remix thing out of indie rock. Uh, but I, I love it. I was into dance music before I knew these guys and kind of before a lot of them were. And when I first met them, I was screaming at them to get remixes. I want everybody to do remixes. I love that stuff. You get in a recording studio, you can just do so many different things that can't be done on a stage. And uh, a lot of people concept of recording is to take your band in the studio and play and record what happens like a band. But that seems to me and to the rest of us to just like be wasting a lot of potential of what can be done. So and we've all grown up listening to music that was heavily, you know, that used a lot of studio trickery. So that stuff is totally in our heads. And even we try to do that on stage. And we're certainly not going to just record the sound of the band. There's a lot of stuff that can be done, and, and we like to have fun.